Well, good evening. Um, hope everyone's doing well. It's, it's uh, good to see everyone tonight. Uh, filling in for Charlie tonight, and uh, just uh, just excited about the next few few days here. And and tonight, as far as we're going to be in Psalms 23. Uh, really, over the last few weeks, I've just been looking at uh, what to uh, teach on, or really cover the next few weeks to come. And and uh, Psalms 23 to be the beginning. And, and following through with the next few few weeks in Psalms also. But Psalms 23 is a, uh, has a special meaning to me. Uh, I know that uh, my grandmother years ago, I remember this being a psalm that she had remembered and remember her reciting it. And, and I know there was a time in my life I really didn't understand exactly uh, the true meaning of it. But look at it today as a follower of Christ and, and uh, just uh, take joy in, in the peace that I find in Christ. And, and the peace also that we find in the Lord and, and, and he, Him being there and, and taking care of us and washing over us. And thinking about that tonight, there's there's things here, and, and one of the things that comes out is uh, that good shepherd and, and, and talking about a good shepherd and what he does. And I remember years ago, my mom had, uh, there was a book that I had read that she had given me, and uh, it talked about all the aspects of a shepherd and how he took care of the sheep. And, and I know that uh, he would keep salve uh, on, his, on his person. He would uh, put salve on, his, on the sheep's nose. And he would just take care of those sheep. And thinking about that in the, the, you know, as, as God and what he does for us, how he takes care of us, he, he's right there all the time. And, and looking at that tonight in Psalms 23, I, I know uh, thinking about Psalms 23, it, it really breaks down in, in two different categories. I know verses 1 through 4, it really shows the good sh him being the good shepherd, but also in 5 and 6, uh, he's the, the, the host. Uh, he, God's our host. And, and we'll see that tonight if we finish through to the, that point. But uh, let's read uh, Psalms 23 here tonight, and we'll get started here. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Father, we, we love you. We we praise you. We, we thank you, Father, for uh, the day you've given us. Uh, I thank you, Father, for each person here tonight that is listening. And Lord, tonight as we go through your word, I, I just ask, Lord, that you open our hearts and our minds to your word. I ask, Father, that we set aside those things that just kind of hold us back. And Lord, that we just focus on and on you as the shepherd, you as our, our sustaining help. And Father, as we lay this before you, I just ask you speak to us. Father, may it, you set me aside. May it not be of me, but of your word and your will. Father, I love you and I do praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look here tonight, thinking about this and talking about the good shepherd, uh, it says there in verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, Jesus is that good shepherd who went one step beyond what we talk about David being the shepherd. Jesus gave his life for the sheep. And as we think there, it said in John, John 10, 11, it says Jesus gave his life for, for the sheep. Um, what we're talking about there is he he came to this earth to die on a cross for our sins. He, 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 him being that good shepherd, he's here to protect us and watch over us, but he made the ultimate sacrifice for each of us. He died on the cross for each of us. He died for his sheep. I would say there, us thinking about that, I, I would think of uh, young King David and, and when he was that shepherd boy and when he was protecting his father's sheep and, and really taking back and, and looking at that and I mentioned there just a minute ago that, that Christ went beyond what David had done you know but in, in protecting the sheep David faced a lot of uh, fierce, fierce animals uh, it says there it talks about him uh, killing a bear and a lion uh, you know he, he was in a battle uh, and it was there to protect those sheep you know a shepherd uh, he's a companion to the sheep uh, he's a protector, and he's also a guide. Uh, a, a shepherd will always lead his sheep. Uh, I know as, as Christians, people are called to service, uh, talking about this today, 
you know, we're, we're called, we're always, we have to remember, we're always called to leave. We're never called to drive. And, and when we think about that and understand that as a, as a Christian, uh, you can't make anybody do anything. But you can lead them that way. You can direct them and guide them that way. Uh, you're not there to drive them, but you're there to help. Uh, you're there to restore and to love. And as a good shepherd there, we see that in, in Jesus. He, he's there to protect us. Uh, you know, in protecting the sheep, uh, he faces, faces all those animals that, that can take the life of those sheep. And you know what? The shepherd's not going to let that happen. It says in Isaiah 40, 11, it says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are, are with young. You know, as Jesus leads and as he guides, uh, you know, we understand something as that good shepherd. I, I would look there, and one of the things that come out of this is that God leads. Uh, he, he's going to lead us. You know, a lot of times we, 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 we struggle about being led. We, we don't want to be led. We want to do things the way we want to do it. It's, it's all about the way we want it. It's what we want to do right now. But, you know, uh, even having somebody tell me years ago, said, you know, well, I'll do it and then pray about it. And, and if you get into problems, you know, you just pray a little more. But as, as a Christian, we, we, we should be uh, willing and, and, and desire to be in God's will and, and allow God to lead us and to, to guide us. So if as a shepherd, that good shepherd, there's one thing there. As God leads, we know that uh, he's got our best in mind. Uh, you know, talking about the 23rd Psalm and, and talking about here, him being that shepherd, he has your best in mind. He, he wants to protect you. He wants to watch over you. One of the things about a shepherd is that he, he sees things coming that you'll never see. And, and the Lord will see those things. And, and he'll, he'll see those and catch those things. You know, uh, be willing to, uh, to wait on the Lord also. Uh, some will say, uh, when you, I don't know, in, in my life over the years when I, when I would uh, wait on the Lord and we'd pray about things, I've had people say that I procrastinate. Uh, I, I've had people say, well, you know, maybe, maybe he's lazy. But in all reality, the fact of it is is that when you wait on the Lord, it, it may not happen just as soon as you want it to. It may not happen immediately. There may be times that it, it could take years. Uh, but if you'll be patient and allow God to lead and allow God to, to work before you, I, I can promise you uh, where we say that God is good, uh, his plan for you is good. And, and we, we need to wait on the Lord. But God will lead you. Jesus will lead his sheep. Uh, so tonight, one of the things here that we're saying, and he says, he is, is my shepherd. You know, be, be willing to be led. Uh, be willing to lay down your life to him and allow him to lead. He goes on to say, I, I shall not want, or I, I would say not lack, as we would look at that. You know, uh, the second part of that, we would say that uh, he'll, he will meet all, all your needs. Uh, in Philippians 4, 19, we all know that verse. It says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know, it says in verse 1, I shall not want or lack, basically what it's saying. I, I, I was There's a, a story that I was reading in, in a book here, and, and uh, I know a lot of people would know the name uh, Jill Briscoe, but she's an author and a speaker, and it says here that she I had uh, been traveling for two weeks straight speaking at meetings. Some, somehow the tight schedule allowed on, only time for talking and not much for eating. When, whenever it was uh, meal time, I would find myself uh, on one more airplane. On this particular day, it was hot, it was summer, and I was tired and hungry. My flight had been delayed, and, and by the time I arrived at the next conference center, I discovered that my host had gone to bed. In the morning, I learned that because of the delay flight, she presumed I would not be coming until the, the following day, hence no welcoming committee. I wandered around the large dining room hoping to find something to eat, but all the doors in the kitchen had been locked. Lord, I prayed, I really don't care what I eat, but I need something. And while I'm talking to you about this, I've got a yearning for peaches. Oh, for the lovely, refreshing, juicy peach. Then I smiled. That was just the sort of prayer I counseled others against offering. I sighed, picked up my bags, and went to my assigned cabin. When I arrived at my room, a basket of peaches sat on the doorstep, smiling up at me. I lifted them up and felt my loving Lord smile. It could have been oranges or apples, you know. 
Never before or since have I re received a whole basket of delicious fresh peaches. The Lord provided a sweet touch that reminded me of his great love. You know, one of the things here we're talking about that God meeting our needs and, and, and laughing about here with this little story. You know, those things there, there's times in our life that we, we just, we need them. And, and there's things that we, we, we look to the Lord to give us. And a lot of times I think that we move before God's, before God's movement. And, and I think as, as we're looking at this here, talking about that, and it says there, I shall, I shall not want. You know, placing your trust in the, in the Lord and laying those things out before Him is, is, is what we need to do as a follower of Christ. Uh, I know each of us this evening as we, we look at our life, uh, there's things there. Uh, that, that maybe we're trying to move ahead of. There's things there that we're desiring. And, and I ask you tonight, how, how many are really taking the time to lay that before the Lord in prayer? How many are taking that time to, to say, Lord, I, I, I need this, or I, these are this is a situation I'm dealing with. And I know many times in my life that just taking it to the Lord in, in prayer, God answers those prayers. And uh, I would say here when it says, I, I shall not want, you know, God's going to meet those needs. There's a lot of things that we that are met that we never see. There's a lot of things there that we we, we just can't maybe take for granted. But you know, God is are, is meeting those needs, and and we need to be thankful of those things. Uh, God's got this, no matter your circumstance, uh, no matter what's going on in your life tonight, uh, no matter whatever you're facing, whatever tomorrow brings. I want you to understand something. God has this. God's got it. He's taking care of it. Lay it before the Lord. It also goes there, and in verse 2 it says, he, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And and how we look at that is still waters, waters of rest. I, I would say here that in the third part of this is uh, he is a God of rest and peace. Uh, today it's so it's so easy to get caught up in, in a life of busyness and, and how hectic things are. I was thinking, uh, as I was looking at this today, you know, we've all got work schedules. Uh, if you're home, you've got a home schedule. If you're at school, I know there's a lot of teachers tonight that uh, uh, just there's a lot going on with them and, and, and with the online studies. Uh, there's a lot of schedules. I, I think about churches. Or there's, there's a lot of schedules that you'll find in a church. Everything that seems to be on a, everything seems to be on a schedule. It, it seems like it needs to be done yesterday. And, and that's the way the life that we face today. And it's so easy to get caught up in that. In a, in a busy life, we forget to relax or even take time uh, for ourselves or anyone else. Not to mention what, what fails or what falls behind is our, our time and our relationship with the Lord. Uh, you know, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, it says, uh, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And, and thinking about this here tonight as we were looking at these verses, and it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I, I would say there that He's a God of, of rest and peace. You know, how many tonight would fall into that category that you're caught up in the, in the busyness, the hecticness of this life? And, and how many of us tonight would look at it and say, You know, I, I'm caught up in that. And, and really what's happening is, is, is my relationship to the Lord is... is, is in, in failing. It's, it's in, a, in a bad place. And, and I would look at that and think of this. Why not put your trust in the Lord? Uh, where it talks about that, uh, that he, he make me lie down in green pasture, he leadeth me beside the still waters, I think of that peace. But I also think of a flock of sheep that's led by a shepherd. And, and you know, a flock of sheep led by a shepherd in this biblical times that we're sitting here talking about, you know, there was, there was many uh, animals there that uh, would like to eat the sheep or kill the sheep. But, you know, the sheep, were, they were peaceful, and, and they were living in peace, and they were, they were grazing and enjoying that. And why was that? It's because the shepherd was there. They, they put their trust in the shepherd. So think for a moment about us as, as, as a follower of Christ, as, as Christians, individuals here tonight that, that may not know the Lord. Uh, what we need to do is we need to put our, our, our trust, lay our fears upon on the Lord. You know, as we, we go about our day, uh, know that He's there. Uh, as we, as we uh, carry on each day in this old world, understand, you know, as COVID-19 and, and, and 
everything that we're facing at work and how things have changed, maybe it's our financial issues, uh, whatever it be, you know, know that God's there. He's got these things. He, he's, uh, as we said there just a minute, he's got, he, he, he can take care of that. Lay those things at his feet. Uh, Ezekiel 34, 14, it says, I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be, there shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. And I, I said and think, as as a young man uh, growing up in Kentucky, and think about the cattle and things that I saw, and and I always thought it was so so peaceful to see cattle just kind of laying out in the field and just kind of grazing and enjoying the, the the grass and the water and just taking it easy. And I always thought, you know what a what a peaceful life a cow would have. But you know, us as, as Christians, to think about the peace that we have in Jesus, uh, to think about the, uh, the comfort that we should have, and, and the knowledge and understanding, that joy that we find in Jesus Christ, that we lay those things down before him and take peace in it. And you've got to let it go. You, have to, you, have to, you can't just hold on to it and, and say, you know, well, my life today, I, I, I'll lay it down at the altar and I'll pick it back up and take it home with me. Well, you can't do that. What we have to do is we, we lay it down and give it to the Lord. Uh, so tonight when we think about that and talking about this other part here, uh, he is a God of rest and peace. But you know, you've got to give it to him. You have to allow him to have that, 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 that ruckus that's going on within your life. You need to hand it to him. In verse 3 it says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, he's a God of restoration. Uh talking about he restores my soul I, I know in my life as a Christian there, 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 there's hard days you know there's some days that I, I just I don't know if I'm going to make it through it but in that time what I have to do is I just have to look and understand that, that Lord this is not my home this is not my place this is yours how is it that, that I live this life for your glory I know Charlie at the message Sunday one of the things that he said and, and I've heard this said so many times in the past is that we live our life in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, we the things that we do in our life, we ought to do it in Christ's name. You know, at, at, uh, how, how is it that we raise our kids? We raise our kids in Christ's name. How is it that we uh, go, to, uh, uh, go to work every morning? We do it in Christ's name. We do our life in a manner that glorifies Jesus Christ, presents Jesus Christ. And, and if we do that, even this week, as I have uh, tried to do that in my life this week, as, as I would go about things this week, I would say, I'm going to do this in Jesus' name. If I had a meeting, uh, I, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. I'm going to present Jesus Christ as I go. And, and that's what we're talking about here. He restoreth my soul. We lay those things down before the Lord and allow God to live out of us. Uh, it says here also, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. I, I, I was thinking there also, we, we, we face a wicked world. And, and talking about that, uh, you know, Satan's plan is uh, is definitely your demise. And and in in our in our strength through Jesus Christ, uh, he doesn't have a chance. Uh, if we'll let God have and hold and take hold, we, we lay those things before him. Psalms fifty or Psalms five eight says, "Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face." You know, as we go from day to day, and you're placing your life and your heart and your trust within Jesus. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times what happens is the wicked things, the things of this world will be set aside and you'll just press on through. And, and that's where our strength comes from. We get our strength in Jesus Christ. How, how is it that your strength holds up? Where, what is it that you draw your strength from? Do you draw it from the things of this world? Do you draw it from your bank account? Do you draw it from uh, your family? Or do you draw it from Christ? Do you, do you lay those things out before the Lord and allow Jesus to be lived through you? I would say here also in that, talking about he is the God of restoration. He also, he is that God that leads and guides and directs. But it also says there in this, in that he, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Uh, <clears throat> I think of each, each morning when, when I get up in the morning. There's, not, there's, there's a word that comes out of this through Christ. Christ is that light within us. Uh, you know, there's a J. Vernon McGee, and, and something I, we were talking about this morning, is J. Vernon McGee, uh, he says that when you would take a, la a lamp to the barn at night, the birds would sing and the rats would run. And, and what we're talking about, looking at that tonight, 
and, and thinking about that, the light of Jesus Christ in you, the light of Christ that shines through you, but also uh, the light that, that Christ gives you. Guys, you, you can make a difference in this world, but it also makes a difference in how you look and how you focus upon the things that you deal with day to day. Uh, you know, if we, we cannot face the darkness of this world on our own abilities. It's, it's not possible. Talking about that righteousness, it, you know, God died, you know, Christ died on a cross, and he took something he didn't have when he died on the cross. He took our sin. He didn't have sin, but he, he took our sin upon himself, and, and, and he gave us something that we can't beg, borrow, buy, or steal, and that's righteousness. Our, our life today is we stand firm in Jesus through his righteousness. You know, God looks at our faith as righteousness. And, and, and in that, that's what Christ is in our lives. He, he is that righteousness that, we, that we're looking for. So we need to understand that he restores my soul, and he leadeth me in the path of righteousness. You know, the fifth thing here that I wanted to look at also in this is that God gives us strength to overcome. It says in verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, the most fearful thing I've ever done in my life was to answer the call of ministry. I know that uh, there's times that I've faced death. There's things that, that I have seen. There's places I've been. And, and it made my knees crumble. But... I think about it tonight. The most fearful thing that ever happened in my life was uh, when I was called to ministry. And I, I look at it, I, I hadn't been trained. Uh, I didn't think that, that I could be used. Uh, I, I thought, well, maybe I can just fill in or do this or that. But you know what? Uh, I just laid it out before the Lord, and I said, Lord, here I am. And however you can use me, uh, what's left of me, uh, I, I give it to you. And you know what? God uses that. And and he uses that every day. And I, I think about it today, and he talks about that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I, I would think in this, you know, sure, we, we, we walk daily in this old world, this this, this valley of death. Uh, we, we, we see the things of this world. Uh, and you know what? It comes back, and we mentioned just a minute ago, this isn't our home. Uh, the best is yet to come for a Christian. And, and I, I have to remember that. We have to remember that. But I know today as we, we walk through this world of uncertain times, I, I can promise you I can find certain things. Though this world is uncertain, I have a certain salvation in Jesus Christ. There's a certain hope that I, I have there. So as we walk each day, you know, why not walk in Christ? Why not allow Jesus to be that comfort? It says, I will fear no evil. And, and how we look at that, talking about that, uh, what what does that mean? I, I I will fear no evil. In Psalms three six it says, I, I will not be afraid of ten thousand of people that I have set themselves against me around about. And it says in Psalms twenty seven one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know what? As as a as a follower of Christ, if if you put your trust in Jesus Christ. It says there, for, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe, believe in him, shall not perish but have everlasting life. It reminds me of a story of a soldier uh, in World War II, and, and his mother was a praying lady, and she promised him that every day at, at a certain time that she was going to pray. Well, the, the young man was in battle, and their communication line was cut, and uh, it was up on the pole, and several of the soldiers tried to get up, and they were shot. And the young man told his company commander, said, uh, at this certain time and at this certain point in the hour, I'll climb that pole and, and connect those wires back together. Well, that time came and the young man climbed up the pole and bullets rattled all around him. And, and he got walked, climbed back down and he, after he'd fixed the pole and not a scratch on him. And the captain come over and talked to him and said, son said, why did you do that? How, how was that possible? And he says, well, I know my mother at that certain time, a certain time of the day, every day is on her knees in prayer for me. And it was that certain time. But what it is, he, he, he knew that his mother was in prayer for him. But that's what we, we, we look and know and understand. We put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. 
I, I would say here also in this, the one that finally seals this up more than anything, the latter part of that verse, it says in, in verse 4, it says, For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In Psalms 46, 1, which, which we'll follow back through that next week, Psalms 46, 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In verse 2 it says, For therefore will not, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. It says there, God is our refuge. That's what the psalmist is saying there. No matter what's going on, no matter the circumstance, looking at Psalms 23 here tonight, he is our shepherd. He is that ever, ever present help. Uh, he, he is that. And, and I ask you tonight, are you putting your trust? Are you putting all that faith? Are you laying it before the Lord? Do you have uh, Jesus as your shepherd? Or is, he that, is he that comfort in your life? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's good to come to you all tonight and, and to look at the Psalms and, and, and to be excited about what, what we have in Jesus. And I just lay that out before you tonight. Maybe someone there tonight doesn't have that peace, doesn't have that comfort. Maybe you're dealing with some issues or things in your life, and, and you're, you're, you're wanting that peace, not really understanding how to lay those things down. But we would, we would love to talk to you. I'd love to be in getting prayer with you, sit down and talk. Uh, but if there's anybody there tonight that is watching us or watching me, I, I ask you to give us a call here at the church office. Uh, you can call me on my cell phone. You can get my number here. You can call Pastor Charlie. I know there's several people here who would love to help and, and be a part in, in helping you. So why don't you give us a call if that's the case. Uh, but we're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday at 930 at the park here at the school. And I uh, want you all to have a great week. But thank you for joining us. Let us pray and we'll close here in prayer. Father, we just love you and we praise you. And I just thank you for this evening. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, for you being that, that, that help, that, that presence there, Father, that we're looking for, that peace. And, Lord, I just ask, Lord, that each person here tonight, Father, as we bow here before you, I just ask, Lord, that you give them that comfort. I ask you just intercede within the things and the issues that they're dealing with in their life. And, Father, I just ask you to speak to us tonight through this word that we've, that we've spoken. And Father, we just love you and we praise you. We're going to lay all our trust and hope within you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you.